If you want more FIFA content from me, I'm now uploading exclusive videos to Patreon. The link for that is down below. And if you want to avoid the random lottery that is FIFA points, you can go straight to the source with u7buy.com. And of course, you can use the code TVM at checkout to get yourself a discount. What is going on guys, Tim here, welcome back to another player review, as quickly as I could possibly get it done, 88 rated flashback Ogbonna, I for, for went, for go, I didn't do 6 o'clock content uh, today and I decided to review the card itself anyway, because it's one of those cards that I think a lot of people will probably look to do, especially as they've released the 84 to 91 upgrade, a lot of people would be tempted to do that, a lot of people don't think that's good value for coins, I don't think it's that bad actually. Uh, you've got a, a pretty good chance for, for 12k of packing either something that's going to help you toward the Og Bonner card, and as well as a few others, of course, uh, even the icons. But also, uh, a lot of uh, the Foot Birthday cards are 91 or below. In fact, uh, if I go and have a look at them, uh, there's only three cards that have been released for Foot Birthday who are actually over 91, Griezmann, Hazard, and Mbappe. So you can still get, like, Rashford and Sissoko and Maximin and things like that. So I don't think it's that bad. Anyway, we're not there to talk about that. If you're watching this and that SBC is no longer available, then, um, yeah, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. But Ogbonna is there for the duration. It will not expire. It's currently coming in, and you better be sitting down for this. It's currently coming in at 340 to 360,000 coins. <sighs> That is expensive. It is. It's a lot of money, and a lot of people are unhappy about it. But the beauty of it is, of course, is you can grind towards it, and you can uh, sort of eke it out a bit here and there. You don't have to go and complete the whole thing in one go. I mean, you can do if you want to, if you have what it uh, what you have in the club, and, and you can get it done, and you've been waiting for this SBC or whatever, then that's fair enough. But you can build towards this. Take untradeables one week, hopefully pack like a, a Harry Kane or something. That'll offset some of the rating. It's not going to be too difficult. And you get a, yourself a very good card as well. I mean, with an anchor in particular, a 96-rated centre-back, that's almost the best you can get, you know. I mean, it's not that doesn't mean that he's going to be the best defender you've ever used, because there are definitely some underlying issues. However, I'm here to talk you through some of the positives first, then we'll talk about one or two, because there aren't that many negatives, really. Uh, in terms of the standout positives with an anchor chem style, every single defensive stat there is now fantastic. 99, slide tackle and stand tackle with 95 interceptions and defensive awareness, and 96 heading. Now, without the chem style, there's a lot of light green knocking about the place, you know, like 85 defensive awareness, 86 heading, but the, the anchor really does make a, a, a massive difference. You do really get a, a polished player with with that chem style. And uh, 99 strength, 98 jumping, not that you need it because he's 6'3", and 95 aggression as well. The one thing that I noticed, and I'm hoping you're going to see it, you won't see it in the clips, you'll see it in the game at the end when I'm going through the review and in the little screen in the middle, there is a particular pass that he plays. My God, it's such a good pass for a centre-back. Uh, I, I didn't expect him to be able to pull it off. I tried it. It worked a treat. It was fantastic. The um, the positive thing about Ogbonna in this team is, of course, Zambrotta at right-back gives him a really good link. And uh, being a Premier League player links into that footmas David De Gea. I am getting so much use out of that De Gea. He is my main goalkeeper across three different accounts. I have played 2,000 games with that. Well, maybe not 2,000 games, actually. Maybe more 1,000 games with De Gea. I've played over 2,000 games across three accounts, but I, I think, yeah, probably 1,000 games plus with that De Gea now. Absolutely mental. Uh, that being said, we're here to talk about Ogbonna. He's a menace to attackers. He's not necessarily the best defender I've ever used. And in fact, I don't even think he's in the top five defenders I've used. But he's just, he's a pain. You know, he's one of those really annoying defenders to play against. Where he doesn't necessarily get in there and get the ball every single time. But he will cause you problems. He'll put you off balance. It's an absolute nuisance to play against him. And uh, he created the chance there that led to Mbappe getting that goal. And incidentally, my opponent um, had to make three subs then. And then in the end, went on to just leave the game anyway. But um, he's, like I said, a nuisance defender. His positioning is very, very good. He will cause you all sorts of issues if you're playing against him. If, you, if you've got him... Then it's it's an irritating one. He was fouled there, incidentally. I don't, a bit of a dodgy one. Could easily have uh, not given that and, and given the goal, and I probably wouldn't have complained about it to be fair. But it is what it is. So yeah, it, it, it's a very it's a, it's a tricky one, right? So if you, like I said, if you're playing against him, he's a nuisance because he won't necessarily get in there and get the ball every single time, but he'll put your player off balance and so on. But if you've got him. 
You might think that he's not doing his job properly, but what he does is put the player off enough to allow the other defender to close in the CDM to come back. He's just one of those sort of menacing defenders that um, that you may find more often than not is, oh, well, he's not doing his job. Why isn't he making a tackle, etc., etc. Gets a goal there off a corner. I very rarely score off corners. My opponent did not track that near post. Oh, I say near post. It was sort of more uh, left to the to the six-yard area. But as you can see, I, I ran in with him there. He, he brought two players... Uh, short and uh, Ogbonna nodded that in it was um, a pretty comfortable header for him actually I, like I said I don't normally do I tried it again here uh, ball comes in Ogbonna's in and around the penalty area I've, I've got him go back post this time but he's challenging that defender he wins the header nogs it across and Ben Yedder is the one that lashes it a goal but unfortunately it didn't uh, didn't quite go in uh, decided to go for goal there I mean he does have 53 long shots so you know why why not no never do that he's actually really really good from corners though he will win headers regardless of where he is in the box whether he back post or in toward that near six six yard box etc he will win uh headers from corners so definitely um a goal scoring threat up there but Going back to his um, his negatives then, he's not impregnable, right? You can get past him, but he has that sort of, that like that there. He didn't actually get, he got the ball, but he didn't have possession of the ball. It sort of just bobbled away from him. He's just one of those sort of clumsy defenders, but he does it well. It's really strange to just, to try and describe what this guy is all about. He's just a clumsy, a good quality, clumsy centre-back, if you will. It's a strange one. Um, so let's talk about one more of the negatives then. It is going to be the mobility. Now, unfortunately, despite the fact that with an anchor, he has 84 acceleration, 98 sprint speed, and without the anchor, 79 ex acceleration and 93 sprint speed, he doesn't actually feel that quick and there's a reason for it. it's a very good reason um well there are several actually first of which he's six foot three he has a high and average plus body type so what that means is basically he's tall and he's not like fat obviously that's a stupid that's not the word to use but he's like he's not stocky either but he is he's big and he's tall so his mobility is is hindered by that and of course he does have very poor agility 73 but and 72 balance you'd expect that really from a from a six foot three center back so don't expect him to be 98 sprint speed because he, he's just not he does get quicker as like a straight line goes so as time went on i was actually pushing the line up to see how how good he was at tracking back and he's good at tracking back but it's just like now and again his pace will let him down but the sprint speed allows him to catch up with the play the problem with that is if you play a deep line you're not going to feel like he's quick at all because your your line is so deep that you're not going to be using the sprint speed as much as you are the acceleration so if that hopefully that makes sense uh that's realistically though the, those are the only negatives you know the fact that he's just not going to feel that quick and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, even if you put a shadow on him, the agility and, and the balance just won't let him be quick. The height will always hinder him. So unless you can somehow shave, uh, I don't know, five inches off him and, and increase his acceleration by 15, I, I genuinely don't think you're going to you're gonna be able to uh, to get away with it. Um, the, the only other sort of slight little niggle, I guess, is the work rates. You know, medium, medium for a centre-back. Realistically, what you want is a high defensive, but I'm not bothered about that. That's fine. So... I've not really praised him much. Let's get to praising. His sprint speed is good when you play a high line. He does get back. He's fantastic for chem links. So he's Italian. You can link him into some Serie A squads. He obviously plays in the Premier League. Icons obviously linked to him. There are some good Italian icons that you can link to him as well. So yeah, you've got an awful lot of option there when it comes to chem links. And his sprint speed is good. His passing range for a centre-back is brilliant. 88 long passing, 90 short passing. Uh, like I said, there is one pass... Um, that you may or may not see during these clips. And he has a bit of a weird, awkward moment here. This is what I'm talking about with this clumsy defending. That wasn't convincing in the slightest, but he still managed to get away with it, and we get a goal kick. But that's time and time again. He's just going in for a challenge. He, he gets the ball, doesn't really have possession of it. It bobbles out to your your um, one of your other players. They take it on. You run up the other end. You score a goal. That happens all the time and it's not like oh that was that was lucky that's just what he does he clatters in there uh, on a wing and a prayer gets the ball and then lets someone else carry on with it and I actually really like this it's not refreshing that's not the word I'm looking for but it is it's a, a no-nonsense style of defending then I guess uh, one of the passes he plays is a really good pass for a centre-back I didn't expect him to be able to do it I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it it might be here it might not be no it probably isn't um 
When it comes to his strength, of course, there's going to be second to none here. I mean, six foot three body frame with 99 strength with the anchor chem still on him. I mean, it's almost unplayable at, at times. Like anyone, like any sort of, I don't know, anyone under six foot running up against him. And so long as you can get side by side, no chance. You've won that ball. There's absolutely no chance Alejandro Gomez, for example, is getting past him. This is the pass right here. Look at this for a pass from a centre back. Drags it back, left footed all the way out. I mean, he is left footed to be fair, but left footed all the way out to the wing. I mean, you might not think that's a good pass, but for a centre back, that's, in my opinion, quite impressive. I do like him. I do think he's worth it. I don't think he's a meta centre back because he doesn't have the agility and the balance and he's maybe a little bit too tall to be a meta centre back. But I do still really like him and he played very, very well for me. So in terms of value for coins, I don't think it's bad because it's available throughout the rest of the game and you can just chip away at it as you go along. So yeah, not a bad card at all. Should you do it? If he fits in your team, in your Premier League team, yeah, I actually think it's a good SBC. Let me know what you think of the card in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for you, and until the next time, goodbye. Football Index, the game changed. Download the app now.